In mid-November 2023, the Republic of Ghana organized the African Reparation Conference, the ARC. And during this international conference, the current president of Ghana made a very interesting statement. He actually urged global funds to financially compensate Africans for trade slavery. Welcome to your favorite podcast, Smart Intellectual Knowledgeable African, I'm Philip Sika. Before I start discussing further this topic, let me invite you to click on the subscribe button if you're not a member yet, and to also activate the ring bell so that you do not miss out on the interesting episode. Please allow me to actually make a special pledge to you. I personally believe that this episode is very important. Why that? Well, The topic I'm about to discuss is one of the most important and one of the most fundamental reality of African people. Whether we like it, whether we are proud of it, whether we are sad about it, whether we are happy about it, whether we feel some anger or, you know, some, any kind of feeling or sentiment It is unfortunately part of our history because it is something that happened, though it happened, you know, centuries ago. Slavery is one of the biggest, you know, and one of the most difficult events ever experienced by African people. And as a young African, I personally believe that although we are currently living in, in, in a more globalized era, it is very important for every race, for every culture to constantly, you know, be aware of their history, be aware of what happened, our history, so that it helps us you know, make the right decision for today, but also to better apprehend our future as a continent, as, you know, a society. So, again, I am going to ask you to share this episode, to share this knowledge, you know, with your current network, your friends, everyone, you know, who is of African origins, but also anyone, you know, who is interested in history, who is fond of, you know, development, talk, and critical analysis. Okay, now let's dig in. As I was saying in the introduction, this year in Ghana, especially in the city of Accra, was held the African Reparation Conference. And the reason why I am referring to this event is merely because of the participation of a very interesting guest, the president of Ghana. He is actually known to be very hard-spoken. And once again, he actually held true to his reputation by making one of the most, you know, important and one of the boldest statement ever. He actually talked again about the trade slavery, but now stressing the necessity for the international community, for developed economies to actually compensate Africans, you know, for their participation in this shameful business called 
slavery. So, <clears throat> though this is a very interesting statement, we need to ask ourselves, we need to assess the statement. And the first question that actually comes in my mind is to try and understand why will they even, you know, ask for compensation? How do the international community view African trade slavery? Well, to answer this question, we need to return to the 90s. A couple of decades ago, the debate was already, you know, put on the table of major democracies, such as France, the United States, the UK, etc. And in 2001, France became the first developed country to actually acknowledge trade slavery as a crime against humanity under the Taubira law. So this is actually, or this was one major success for the proponent, you know, of such a good cause because a lot of African leaders and non and also non-African leaders were fighting towards the recognition of trade slavery as a crime against humanity. What does it tell us? It actually tells us that even, you know, based on the shamefulness of that business, based on all the atrocities we've read, you know, in books, we've watched on documentaries, before 2001, it was still difficult for developed economies, for some people, some countries, some leaders, to even fathom, you know, African trade slavery as a crime. So, it means that for some people, what happened was perhaps not relevant or perhaps not as dramatic as it was. It was merely something or some situation that actually happened like centuries ago without being branded or labeled or even called for what it was. So being able to see a country such as France coming to the fore and internationally and publicly acknowledging trade slavery as a crime against humanity was actually a very important success and victory for you know the the entire continent so the next question we should ask ourselves is then so what like we have a situation where it is widely known that what happened was a crime but if what happened was actually a crime what should we do about it what should we do about you know the victims let me give you or let me try and put what i'm saying into a perspective right now we are living in an era that we call it is a women era you know when looking at development policies when looking at sustainable development objectives there is now always a gender component we have as a society you know to always make sure that for whatever principle whatever mechanisms whatever tools we are creating for the betterment of people welfare we do integrate a gender component why are we doing this it's because of all the injustice all the discrimination you know women and minorities endure, endured like years ago centuries ago and why are we doing this it's because we actually came to term that what some societies were doing was you know unjust unjustifiable sometimes considered as a crime so my my analysis here is for us to understand that 
Whenever something is considered as a crime, there's always two steps. The first step is to acknowledge it. The second step is to find ways to compensate the victims and also make sure that this never happen again, you know. So coming back to the African trade slavery debate, it is a settled matter when it comes to agreeing to actually see or consider slavery as a crime. But this is judged on a moral standard. What about the other standards, such as the financial standards, such as the economic standard? Because a crime was perpetrated here, and that crime surely, you know, created victims. That crime surely, you know, impacted people's life. It actually impacted some societies. It impacted people's business, people's capacity to, you know, to to produce, you know, some economic goods. People's capacity to create businesses. People's capacity to live as respectable beings. It definitely created. A huge gap between slaveholders and those who were actually providing slaves, those who were actually, you know, turned into slaves, sometimes against their will. So, <clears throat> what I want us to to first understand here it is the statement does not come from, or it does not come out of the blue. The reason why the president of Ghana made such a bold statement is because we already have an international legal precedent, and that international legal precedent is, you know, coming from the acknowledgement of the international community, as I gave you, based on the French example, to agree when it comes to acknowledging trade slavery. As a crimes against humanity. So this is actually a concluded matter. It is a crime, but what about the financial aspect of it? What about the financial solution that we have to provide to the victim? And in the trade slavery, we do have two categories of victim. The first category of victim that we have. Is actually the people, the individuals who were actually turned into slaves, or the survivors, you know, of that shameful business, and also their descendants, you know. And the second category of victim is the African continent, you know, in terms of every African country. Every single African country actually suffered the aftermath of trade slavery. So, if you are curious, you may probably ask yourself, but why do we need to pay Africans for trade slavery? Well, let me give you another example, and let me give you another argument. In the history of crimes against humanity, there are a lot of precedent actually. If We want to run, you know, like a quick Google Google search. We will actually find out that Africans are not the first one to actually ask or, you know, demand some sort of financial reparation for the wrongs that they actually suffered, you know. And one of the most legendary, you know, claim based on crime against humanity. Is actually the Holocaust crime. You are probably familiar with the Holocaust. The Holocaust was perpetrated during World War One and Two. In summary, it is actually the killing of Jewish people in Germany during the Nazi regime. And overall, it is estimated that over six million. Jewish people perished during that, you know, dark time. And 
After World War II, when Germany lost the battle, lost the war against the, the Allies, they were actually condemned and sentenced to first acknowledge their doing as wrong towards the Jewish community, but second, they were also condemned to financially compensate the survivors of the Holocaust. And can you actually guess from 1952 up to now how much money Germany alone has already paid to the Jewish community? Well, up to now they paid over 80 billion dollars as compensation, financial compensation for their crime against Holocaust survivors and against Jewish people. Let me also give you another example. Germany agrees, in addition to paying, you know, or to compensating Jewish people for the wrongdoing, you know, during World War I and II, they agree to fund for the first time, you know, sorry, to actually pay 100 million euro from 2022 to 2025 to found Holocaust education, to actually pay for children who are actually descending from survivors of Holocaust tuition fees. This is very interesting. This is very important, you know, to know. So what I want us to understand in this introduction when it comes to the legitimacy of the claim made by the president of Ghana and some African and non-African leaders towards demanding or urging the international community to financially compensate Africans for trade slavery is that in a nutshell, this claim is legitimate because first Slavery was and is currently recognized and acknowledged, you know, based on international status, based on international law, but also based on sometimes the national laws of developed countries, such as France, as crimes against humanity. That's the one precedent. Second precedent is that for some and many crimes against humanity, we can find a lot of precedent that actually led to the financial compensation of victims. So the next question here is to understand what were, you know, the criteria that actually led to the paying of that or those financial compensation, you know? Is there a difference between Holocaust victims and African, you know, victims of slavery. This is a legitimate question that we should ask ourselves. And this is also a legitimate question we should ask international leaders. If we can find precedent in the in the history of the world where communities were actually financially compensated for suffering, you know, why when it comes to the trade of African slaves that actually happened centuries ago, why is it so difficult to actually get to the bottom of this and come to an agreement? I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope it also shed a lot of light in your understanding. Stay tuned. I will continue discussing this very interesting topic I will provide you with more analysis, more powerful perspective, and we are going to discuss, you know, more about, you know, the financial structure of the claim and whether or not this is something that should ever see the light of the day. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to your favorite podcast, Sika Talks where strong realities meet powerful perspectives. A bientôt.